Good morning. Welcome to the Sunday morning service here at Port Norris Baptist Church in Port Norris, New Jersey. I'm Pastor George Riddell. This is the first Sunday in 2021, and we're delighted that you have joined us. Uh, once again, because of the COVID and the virus, we're not able to meet as a church family, but uh, I thank the Lord that we can meet via the YouTube. And uh, God's been good to us that way, and that's an opportunity that we can take to uh, 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 fellowship together. Now, I'll be honest with you, both my wife and I, we really miss the personal one-on-one -on -one fellowship with God's people. Uh, we love God's people, and we love the people here in Port Norris. They're just precious, precious people. And uh, we miss the fellowship, but we would rather miss the fellowship and help us to remain safe and uh, free from COVID than to have the fellowship and have uh, some of our people come down with it, although we've had some exposed to it and one that we know did have it. But uh, you keep praying for us and we're praying for you folks out there that God will allow this virus to pass uh, in the weeks and months that lie ahead, that we can get back to some normalcy of life. And so in the meantime, I would like to speak to you this, this week and really for the next couple of weeks on stewardship. Now, when we think of stewardship, we often think of our tithes and offerings. But today I wanna to talk to you about a different aspect of stewardship, the stewardship of our time, the stewardship of our time. Let's have a word of prayer and then we'll begin. So Father, bless us now, I pray. Help me to be a blessing and encouragement to these dear and precious folks here in Port Norris. And Lord, it is a blessing and it is a joy and it is an honor and a privilege to be able to open up the Word of God with them Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and to be able to share it. And I thank you for that opportunity and for that privilege. And Lord, I pray that should there be those here this morning that are listening to my voice that do not know Christ, I pray, Lord, and I know the prayer of our people would be that they would come to know Christ, no matter where they are. If they're here in South Jersey or all the way in California listening to us, wherever they are, that they would come to know Christ as their Savior. And we'll thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You know, <clears throat> all of us have the same amount of time uh, that each day that God gives to uh, each person. And it makes no difference if you're a millionaire or really, if you're a pulper, you have the same amount of time. It makes no difference if you're a, a PhD or if you've never graduated from high school. We all have the same amount of time. We have the same amount of time in each day. For example, we have 60 seconds to a minute. We have 60 minutes to an hour. We have 24 hours to a day. We have seven days a week. We have four weeks to a month and 12 months to a year. So each of us, if we're living, have that same amount of time each day. We cannot extend it one second more than what it is. God has given us time to accomplish all that he wants us to accomplish. We can do that. Now, we may not have all the time to accomplish what we would like to accomplish for ourselves, but for what God wants us to do, we all have the same amount of time. If you were to look at Ephesians chapter 5, <clears throat> Ephesians 5 and verse number 16, the Bible says the following. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Redeeming the time in Ephesians 5, 16. Over in Colossians chapter 4 and verse number 5, it says this. Walk in wisdom towards them that are without, redeeming the time. What does it mean to redeem the time? It means to buy up the opportunity. To buy up the opportunity. In other words, take advantage of the time that you have. Use it to your utmost ability to serve the Lord and to be pleasing and be found pleasing to him. Take advantage of that time, because the truth of the matter is, that time can never be gotten back again. For example, 
you've been listening now to me for about five minutes if you've tuned in right at the beginning of the broadcast. You'll never have that five minutes back again, and neither will I. So we need to redeem the time, taking advantage of every opportunity that you and I have. So our stewardship, as we talk about stewardship today, we're not talking about finances, we're not talking about money, we're talking about our time, and we need to be good stewards of our time. And all the time that God gives to us, we need to realize something. All the time that God gives to us is his time. It's really not our time. It belongs to him. In Psalm, the psalmist writes, Psalm chapter 90 and verse number 12, he says, so teach us to number our days. So because our time, whatever time we have here on earth belongs to him, be it a short period of time or be it a lengthy period of time, whatever time we have on earth, Lord, teach us, as the psalmist writes in Psalm 90, teach us to number our days. Teach us to redeem the time. Teach us to buy back the time and to take advantage of the time. So let's look at this and asking God to teach us several things about time. First of all, Lord, teach me that I have time for you. Lord, teach me that I have time for you. In Matthew chapter 22 and verses 37 and 38, the Lord Jesus is speaking and it says, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. In Matthew 6, 33, the Lord Jesus said it this way, But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Lord, teach me that I have time for you. That ought to be my first priority, that I recognize that I have time for the Lord. One of the first things I do every morning when I get up, and I usually get up between five and six in the morning. And this morning I was up probably about 10 minutes after five. Uh, that's just me. I, I like to get up early. I like to get accomplished what needs to be accomplished, realizing the days that we have run by very quickly. But the first thing we ought to do is to recognize that I have to have time with the Lord. You might say to me, but pastor, I'm so busy and I have to uh, be at work rather early and this sort of thing. And, and all of that's understandable. We're all busy. And for those that are still active in the workforce, some of you men I know over the years and women have had to be to work at maybe six o'clock in the morning, at seven o'clock in the morning, eight o'clock in the morning, uh, and, that's, and that's fine. Then adjust your schedule so that you can have time with the Lord before you go off for the day. I don't know about you, but I love to have my devotions early in the morning because as the day goes on, I get a little bit weary. I, I could not spend a lot of time at nighttime in, in the Word of God and in prayer. I, just, I would just fall asleep. That's why I like to give the Lord the first part of the day because that's when I'm the sharpest and that's when I'm the most alert. So the, uh, giving the Lord the priority of the day uh, and uh, to give him time, we need to recognize that this time involves personal worship. Uh, the Lord uh, said in, in John chapter 4, verse 24, God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So we need to worship the Lord. How do we worship the Lord? We worship the Lord in Bible study. We worship the Lord in prayer. We worship the Lord in meditation. Here's some thoughts that I came across uh, regarding God and how God treats us and how we treat the Lord. So let me just ask you a few questions. What if God couldn't take the time to bless us today because we couldn't take the time to thank him yesterday? What if God decided to stop leading us tomorrow because we didn't follow him today? 
What if God didn't walk with us today because we failed to recognize, we failed to recognize it as his day? What if we never saw another flower bloom because we grumbled when God sent the rain? What if God stopped loving and caring for us because we failed to love and care for others? What if God took away the Bible tomorrow because we would not read it today? What if God took away his message because we failed to listen to his messenger? What if God didn't send his only begotten son because he wanted us to be prepared to pay the price for our sin? What if God did not hear us today because we would not listen to him yesterday? What if God answered prayer the way we answer his call to service? What if God met our needs the way we give him our lives? What if? We need to take time to be with the Lord. Lord, teach me that I have time for you. We need to take time to be holy. The hymn writer wrote it this way. Take time to be holy. Speak off with thy Lord, abide in him always, and feed on his word. Make friends of God's children, help those who are weak, forgetting in nothing his blessings to seek. Do not confuse busyness and activity and service as worship. You will remember with me about Mary and Martha and how the Lord Jesus in Luke chapter 10 came and visited them was in their home and Martha was somewhat upset and uh, it says there in verse number 28 of Luke chapter 10 but Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him that is the Lord Jesus and said Lord dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone bid her therefore that she help me now the Lord came I don't know how many folks came with the Lord, but let's assume maybe the 12 disciples came with him. I don't know that, but let's assume that. 13 people drop in on Mary and Martha unexpectedly. Martha's about, uh, about the house trying to show some kind of hospitality and graciousness. I think that most women today, if some folks drop by unexpectedly, would say, would you like to have a cup of coffee? I just baked a cake. Would you like to have a slice of cake with a cup of coffee? In other words, you would show hospitality. Well, here was Martha scurrying about the house, trying to show the right kind of hospitality to the Lord Jesus and whoever else might have been with him. But notice what the Lord Jesus said. He says, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. And so there we are. The Lord looks at her and said, Martha, what you're doing, you're, 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 getting, you're forgetting your priority. Mary has chosen that which is primary. And what is that? Spending time with the Lord. So many times, don't let the day get away from you and you haven't spent time in the word of God or in prayer. Nothing is important. Ladies, that, that wash that has to go in or those dishes that need to be done or those phone calls that need to be made, they can wait. <laughs> I'll guarantee if your husband's working, they'll still be there when you, uh, when you get to them, all right? Uh, and that's just the way that it is. But don't let those things get in the way of your time with the Lord Jesus. Do you remember what the Lord said to the church at Ephesus in Revelation chapter 2 and verses 1 through 7. He lists all their good qualities. And he said, but I have something against you. And I think it's verse number 4. He said, I have something against you. Well, what's that, Lord? You've left your first love. Folks, let's learn that we have time for the Lord Jesus. And why don't we just fall back in love? with the Lord Jesus once again. Lord, teach me that I have time for you. Number two, Lord, teach me that I have time for my family. Lord, teach me that I have time for my family. Someone has said you spell love, T-I-M-E. 
E, time. And that's true. Our wives need our time. Our children need our time. The, wife, the husband has time for the wife. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 7, 33, but he that is married careth for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. The husband has time for his wife. Ephesians 5, 31 says, for this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall be joined unto his wife and they, shall, they too shall be one flesh. The husband has time for the wife. The wife has time for the husband. In Titus chapter 2 and verse 3 and following, it says this, The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becoming holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, that is serious, to love their husbands, and to love their children. In other words, the older women are to have a direct influence on the younger wives and the younger mothers. And then it goes on to say, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. blasphemed. So the Bible is very clear. The husband has time for the wife, and the wife has time for the husband. And so, <clears throat> I might also say this, that uh, the parents have time for the children. The parents have time for the children. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter six and verse number four, and ye fathers provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. So fathers, you and I have a responsibility towards the children. Lord, teach me that I have time for you, Lord, teach me that I have time for my family, that I have time for my wife, that the wife has time for her husband, and Lord, teach us both that we have time for the children. The Word of God says that we are to raise them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. That word nurture simply means to discipline or chastening, that is correcting, admonition. That means teaching or instructions. And this is the requirement for both parents, not just one parent, but both parents. It's a cooperative effort, both parents. We have uh, a grandson who's in the ministry out in Nevada. We thank the Lord for him, him and his wife. And he has said to me on numerous occasions, and I've not forgotten it, he said, he calls me Pop Pop. He said, Pop Pop, he said, my priority in life is to first be the best husband that I can be second to be the best father that I can be, and then third to be the best pastor that I can be. And if he keeps it in that order, everything else, his walk and his relationship with the Lord will be in order as well. So Lord, teach us that we have time for our wives, teach us that we have time for our husbands, teach us as parents that we have time for the children, and then, Lord, teach the children that they have time for the parents. Young people, you only have one set of parents. And uh, one day you're going to find out that they're not going to live forever, at least not here on earth. If they're Christians, they're going to live forever in eternity with Christ. And we thank the Lord for that. But you take time for your parents in your teen years. Your parents have lived longer than you. They know more than you know. They've faced many more heartaches than you've faced. They faced the trials of life. Learn from their wisdom and their discernment. Um, you don't have to reinvent the wheel all over again. Mother and dad would be more than willing to sit down and share with you their mistakes and how they failed along life's way. You don't have to make the same mistakes to learn the lessons that they've had to learn the hard way. So take time for your parents in your teen years and in your adult years and in the declining years of your family. And then recognize that we have time for the family, the husband for the wife, the wife for the husband, the parents for the children, the children for the parents. But we also have time as a family for God in family devotions. 
In Deuteronomy 6, verses 6 and following, it says this, And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thy house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be a fr as frontlets between thine eyes. In other words, we have time as a family to serve the Lord. We have time as a family to be in church together. If you're too busy to be in church, you're too busy. You're busier than God ever intended. And right now we're in the middle of a pandemic and that's not quite possible. But when church gets back, every one of us ought to be in the house of God. The Bible is very clear in Hebrews chapter 10, and verse 25, about not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. We need to come together as a church. So Lord, teach me. Number one, that I have time for you. Number two, that I have time for my family. The husband for the wife, the wife for the husband, the parents for the children, the children for the parents. And as a family, we have time for the Lord. The third principle I'd like for us to see is not only do we have time for the Lord and do we have time for our family with the Lord, but we have, Lord, teach me that I have time for others. Teach me, Lord, that I have time for others. In Matthew 22 and verse number 39, the Bible says, that, well, going back to verse 37, so you catch the flow of it, it says this. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And then in verse 39, he says this, And the second, that is the second commandment, is like unto, the, uh, unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. We are to have time for others and to help others. We are to consider others. The Bible says in Hebrews 10, 24, and let us consider one another to provoke, that is to encourage, unto love and to good works. We are to love others. The Bible says, this is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. So we are to consider one another. We are to love one another. We are to serve one another. The Lord Jesus Christ gave us this example in John 13, where he says, if I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. In other words, what's the example? Of serving others. Of serving others. So we need to consider others. We need to love others. We need to serve others. And uh, we need to, as we mentioned, to provoke one another to good works. We need to prefer one another. In Romans chapter 12 and verse number 10, it says the following, be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love in honor preferring one another. In other words, thinking of one another, considering one another, putting others first. We need to comfort one another. First Thessalonians chapter four. And boy, this is an opportunity in the day and age we're living to be able to comfort or to encourage one another. But it says in first Thessalonians four, it says, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words, verse number 18. Comfort one another, encourage one another. Folks, people are hurting today. People are going through a difficult time. Some people, uh, they're, they're hurting themselves due to uh, the uh, uh, frailties of the flesh, especially with COVID. Or maybe a mother or a dad or a husband or a wife or a child is down with it. People are hurting today. So I trust that... Uh, uh, we'll be cognizant of that and that we will encourage and comfort one another. We're to win others, according to Jude, verse 23, and others save with fear. We are to teach others. In 2 Timothy 2, and verse number 2, it says this, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. So we need to be teaching others as well. And then we need to worship with others. Once again, Hebrews 10, 25, not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And hopefully we will be able to get back to that. And then we need to have a concern for one another according to Philippians 2, 4. 
So Lord, teach me that I do have time for others. I have time to consider them. I have time to love them. I have time to serve them. I have time to provoke them to love. I have time to prefer them. I have time to win them. I have time to teach them. I have time to worship with them. And I have time to share with them. So God's been good. So stewardship of time. How good are you at being a steward of your time? We all have the same amount of time. We all have all the time we need to complete what God wants us to complete. We may not have the time to do everything we want to do, but we do have the time to do everything he wants us to do. And if you're listening to my voice this morning and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, your personal savior, I would encourage you right now to bow your head right where you are and ask him to come into your heart and to save you. And you can do that just by simply doing this, by praying this prayer. Doesn't have to be these exact words, but something similar to it. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I come to you now, and I ask you to save me from my sins. I ask you to cleanse me of all unrighteousness. I realize you've died for me, and your precious blood is the only thing that can make me acceptable to the Father. So Lord, by faith, I ask you to come in and save me for your sake. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in this morning. I trust you will pray a prayer like that and receive Christ.